Hello everyone, my name is Yu Wen. Welcome to another Cello Magic with Cellos in the Park. In this episode, I'm going to share with you three simple tips to help you to play more in tune and make more Cello Magic. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you ask any professional cellist, your top three challenges play into and probably one of them. The three tips I'm going to share with you by no means comprehensive, but they did help me to develop my intonation. I call them put the notes in the back. Letter B stands for block position. Block position means we're not thinking about finger as an individual but as a block, as a unit. In this way, when we put down one finger, we have all hands ready. So it means four fingers already. For example, if we play a fast passage, let's say Sun Song Cello Concerto number one, I am not thinking about one finger each time. I'm thinking about the block. In this way, it's much easier to play fast and play clear and play in tune. Even in the uh, slow passage like the beginning of the, the Warjack, second movement. By staying in one block, you've got all the finger ready and you can focus to maintain your beautiful vibrato. Now how to develop this block position? We have to practice double stops, especially surge in the scale. It is not the most enjoyable thing in the world to do, but it is a great exercise to develop this hand position and this block feeling of the hand. You can also use the etude like Duport number seven, or Piatti number seven from the um, the Caprice. To develop this block position. The second letter A stands for uncurl your thumb. We have this love-hate relationship with our thumb. We know that we have to use the thumb in order to secure our position, but if we squeeze the thumb too much, that creates tension. And we all know that relaxed thumb, relaxed thumb, relaxed hand. Now, how can we create this relaxed yet secure and anchored position? We have to put the thumb in the right position in the right place. Traditionally, we have been taught to put the thumb opposed to the second finger. But more and more, I feel my thumb is go more towards the first finger, sometimes even behind the first finger. And I find that is more natural and relaxed for my hand. So you can experiment yourself and find the most natural position. A good place to start is to go to the fourth position, put your thumb in this wonderful curve, and put your hand on the fourth position. And probably you can see your thumb is more um, facing the first finger rather than the second finger. And you can bring this feeling from the fourth position back to the first. And then you can apply that to all the other positions. So, Really experience different positions and different places to put your thumb to get this secure anchor feeling without squeezing it. The third letter G stands for guiding finger. In our block position, we need to have a leader or we can have a captain of this baton, which is our first finger. Go back to the first example I played in the Sonson Cello Concerto. 
I'm not thinking about all four fingers. I'm only thinking about the first finger. Shifting in one place. Actively, and all the other fingers just passively following my first finger. When we talk about intonation, half of the battle is shifting. We'll cover this topic in our future episode. Now we just a little bit teaser for you. When we shift into a new position, thinking about the guiding finger. Like from here. In Dvorak, the first movement, this shift. Instead of thinking just from first finger to third finger, uh, to the pinky, thinking about the first finger. So musically, we can thinking instead of Dvorak, this is like Godfather. Okay, but don't play like that in the real performance. My point is, whenever you shift to the new position, use your first finger as your guide finger and to bring the whole hand into that block. Shall we review what we have learned? Put the notes in the back. B stands for block position. A stands for anchor your thumb. And G stands for guiding finger. Intonation is a, such a big topic, we only cover a very small amount of it. But if you think those three tips are helpful to you, do give a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave your comments and questions below and I will see you in my next video. Until then, keep making cello magic.